Hey, what's up, everyone? Nathan back with our Monotype Showdown Live. We're going to be back at it with some more Monotype today. I've been counting up the votes on what you guys wanted to see next in the comments. And boy, was the support for normal over the top. We had 20 votes right now, almost doubling the next closest. We're going to be playing that one today. And before we get into the team that I'm going to use today, I want to talk really quickly about MPL, which wrapped up recently this week. And I, you know, it's one of those things that I don't want to call it pro play because uh, it's not technically they're not getting paid, but you know what I mean? Pro players, I often want to incorporate uh, tournaments and specific players in the channel more. But it's one of those things where I don't follow the scene close enough to be able to do so. I wish I could offer like a recap every week and talk about changes that have happened and, you know, the monotype player league, like movements that are happening in terms of usage and stuff like that. It's really difficult. Um, however, I do want to highlight the usage of normal that it saw in week three of this tournament recently. And, you know, I think the reason it doesn't see much usage is it because it's like bad or something like that. I definitely don't think so. I think it's more so if you're going to a tournament setting, you want to go with as many advantages as you can. And normal, of course, famously has no advantage matchups. Now, there's some that I would argue are better in their favor than others. I shouldn't say, you know, across the board, there are no advantage matchups. That's probably an exaggeration, but you catch my drift. Uh, however, it's kind of similar to the Sandless Mono Ground we've been playing recently in that, sure, you don't have these domineering advantage matchups. For sure, we understand that. But in exchange, you've got a shot at almost every other matchup. It puts you, you know, in the range of winning almost every game because you have so many consistent, solid answers uh, that can handle almost every threat. The only exceptions, of course, being uh, Steel and Fighting. But, you know, Fighting... It's a huge wash. Obviously, we get that. Nothing you can really do about that. And only having one disadvantage matchup is actually quite excellent. And I think we saw in our statistics recently, it's only a 5% chance. So having only a 5% chance of being a disadvantage matchup is great. And on the other hand, Steel, uh, if you look at the average mono normal team, uh, you know, Blissey has no uh, normal type attacks. Ditto probably won't. Porygon mostly won't. Healers mostly won't. Diggersby does, of course, rely on normal attacks between its body slam. Uh, maybe even a mega kick or most frequently quick attack. And I think most beware sets are running fire dark cover to this point. I can't speak to every beware. This is not, you know, a monolith of every single mono type team you're going to find, of course. However, I just, I think it I might, we talked about this earlier with a different type. I forget which one, but it might actually take the cake for the least amount of stab run on its team. So mono steel is not a particularly bad matchup by any means either. So really the only disadvantage matchup you have is fighting. And the reason I bring up this replay from Wonka here is because it's really fun. And I think it does show that despite not seeing an overwhelming amount of usage, it can certainly hang with the big boys like Mono Flying here. This is a pretty quick replay, so bear with me. Uh, it's pretty entertaining too. So we get immediate amazing matchup here. Uh, it's going to force a swap on the Landorus. They actually stay into our surprise. I guess they figured that Rock score, no matter what, might as well get what damage you can. We force a uh, recovery from Blissey down the road. Swap it to Mandibuzz, try to defog those away. Seismic Toss goes up. So we see a Toxic here from Blissey. No, they actually pivot out right away. Pitless, he's going to go for the Teleport, though. In comes... Probably one of the bigger problems in, Cel in, in Mono Normal is this Celestela. You can go to your Heliolisk. It's going to invite in a Lander Asterion for free. And you're going to get into a nasty mix-up between the Surf and stuff like that. So you get into a 50-50 at best. Because virtually everybody else, it can just Leech Seed and Protect. And Leech Seed and Protect. And this thing with Heliolisk, too, actually, I neglected to mention. It's, yeah, you go to the Heliolisk. And you Thunderbolt on the Protect. Okay, great. Now they're probably going to their Thunder Lander Asterion. So you got to do a double switch there. Lander's is also a pretty sticky matchup. So you go to the Porygon. But maybe they stay in. It's just, you kind of catch my drift. It's, it's kind of messy in general. But despite what I just said, in comes the Porygon too. Let's see what happens here. Uh, it can probably tell the set here based on this. Actually, I, I might be talking to my ass. I don't think the download really affects what set the Celesteel is running. Regardless, a substitute, really weird, so the Toxic doesn't go up from Celesteela. It's probably meant to stop the Elite Seed, if anything, but sure, that works. Uh, goes for Recover, awesome. Porygon's got one of the better defensive mods in the game. Heavy Slam, not breaking the substitute. This thing is so tanky, unbelievable. And in comes Landorus on the expected uh, Discharge. I shouldn't, I shouldn't say expected, but it comes in on it, no big deal. And in comes Gyarados, okay. Substitute again. <laughs> no problem. Gyarados also can't break the sub. Gets Oko by Discharge. This is ridiculous. It's already going pretty crazy. Substitute's a weird little tech right now. In comes uh, Elvis, the Thunder Asterion. Gets Ice Beams. Bolt Beam coverage. It's stupid. Things need to come on the next Thunderbolt. This thing's choice locked. I believe it takes point of damage. It did. And now they're just popping off at this point. What does Diggers B click? Body Slam. This huge damage at the, after the attack drop. Paralyzes the boot. 
Ditto's gonna come in, run in a clinic at this point. The fact is that there's no uh, Braviary on this team. I think it's kind of popular because a lot of Earthquakes can be tanked by the likes of Porygon. Um, but still, being able to go to this Ditto is awful nice. Comes in, U-turns for the kill, goes back to their Porygon, I'm guessing. Sure is. Now they're looking at their team and go, okay, we gotta get something going here. I'll go to Dragonite, I'll Dragon Dance. Hopefully, we'll take one Ice Beam. Hopefully, it can just kind of sweep from there. Sure, I'll get copied by the Ditto, but I gotta do what I gotta do at this point. Luckily, it's a roof set, so it's well suited to it. Um, you know, the question is with Porygon 2 actually as well, is what set do you run on it? Because um, all three of its abilities are amazing. You've got Trace, so I was messing around with this a little bit. Porygon 2 can come in on these Dragonites and copy multi-scale with Recover. So now you're just, everyone's worst nightmare. Multi-scale substitute uh, Recover is disgusting. Download, of course, often gives you, well, first of all, Intel on your opponent's sets because download uh, changes the boost you get based on what their defenses are. But more importantly, uh, it gives you a huge boost your special attack very often. So now all of a sudden you're hitting with a 50% boost, which is extremely significant for a mod that's normally uninvested like Porygon 2. And there's Analytic, because this thing's got base 60 speed, so Analytic can just give you a consistent 30% boost to pretty much all of your attacks too. So Porygon up there for some of the better, you know, arrangement of abilities in the game. There's an actual tier. Um, I'm embarrassed to admit that I don't know what it does off the top of my head. Everyone suggests I play it, where you run all of the abilities in one. I'm sure someone in the comments will point that out. Um, so, for example, Porygon would have all three of those abilities, and Conkledur has all two of its abilities. I imagine Porygon would be very good in that. Anyways, long tangent, Porygon easily kills this uh, Dragonite, and now they look at their team, and they go, this thing loses to Porygon, this thing is walled by Blissey, and then there's Mandibus, <laughs> and they just forfeit. So, crazy set, um, comes out of nowhere with the only SS normal in the entire tournament, and smokes a really relatively strong type in mono flying here. So something exciting. It's, you know, I think most mono normal teams are running something very similar to this. Well, that's what we're gonna be running with. So yeah, let's get some games. You know, I, I've always said that I believe that this is the one type that beginners should play the most. If you're not drawn to mono normal, you know, obviously play whatever type you're drawn to. I don't think there's any wrong or right thing to do, but it's just, I think it's so easy to learn. Oh, there's a special attacker? Great, go to Blissey. Oh, there's a physical contact attacker like a, uh, a Weavile, great, go to Beware. Oh, there's just a general physical Mon like a Garchomp, go to Porygon. Oh, there's an Electric Mon, go to Diggersby. Uh, oh, there's a Setup Sweeper, go to Ditto. Like, it's just so straightforward and so solidly built, there's an answer for everything. I think it's so, like, clever how I'm wasting time for my opponent here, but, like, these three can tank almost everything, but the only thing they really can't handle is Setup Sweepers. And what do you know, we have the single best Setup Sweeper defeater in the entire tier with Ditto, plus additional speed control in Diggersby. So I, I love it. Uh, here we are against Magic the Gathering Dragon Ball Z, I'm guessing. Mono Electric, really scary. Hopefully we can uh, match up nicely against it here. I'm going to my Ditto as a lead. We get Zero Aura right now. Not what I was looking for, for sure. We go to Beware. I might change this Beware to Choppleberry because, you know, I said it before, but you're not, your worry isn't necessarily mono fighting teams, but it's the random fighting type coverage mons you come across here. And Beware is kind of our answer for that. So I'm going to go to this guy. I'm gonna drain punch. I wonder if I should have bulked up too, because I already bulked up. They only take about 40% here, I'm guessing. That is not much. So let's bulk up, why not? Let's hopefully they don't kill us with a close combat. We got Fluffy. In comes Raichu Alola, threatening a psychic move. We're gonna go to our Blissey, get some rocks up. Not a great start for us, losing a bit of momentum there, but Raichu loses some health. We got Stealth Rocks. As the Zero Aura comes back, maybe. That's the more important thing, is keeping Beware healthy. It's gonna be doing so much work for us here. Magnezone is going to come in, threatening a body press, I can only imagine. Uh, actually a really good matchup for Porygon, one of the few bolt beam resists in the game that I can think of. Uh, we do have some defense. Or he go to Beware, depends on what speed tier is, that's almost certainly maxed out speed. Kind of nasty for us, all things considered. Stiggers be taking a lot. Um, there's not a lot of coverage we can do here, but I need this pussy healthy. One of my fingers crossed, hope that Stiggers be takes this okay. They actually Volt Switch against the Blissey, which is stunning to me. Uh, let's just Earthquake right now. We're gonna read on our opponent's play style. Body Slam was a pretty obvious play there, but I didn't want to overprotect too early on. Little Blissey again, expecting a burn here. Uh, that'll give me a free uh, Teleport on the Volt Switch. The Defog instead, let's get them back up. Uh, it's Leftovers, good, good, good. Not gonna get tricked. Blissey losing a, bit, a little, little bit of health. You know, Heavy Duty Boots kind of sucks because you don't get Leftovers chip uh, regularly here. Um, you have body press, right? Oh, we take nothing from it. Hell yeah. 
<laughs> Hold on a second. Blissey, kind of good? Hot take. Boom. Blissey, good in Pokemon. Who knew? Great. Okay, we get that up. Let's let's do one more, just because we're cheeky. No, let's teleport. I can tell they're swapping out here. Ooh. Ooh. Only like that. Uh, what can I do here? Again, Porygon 2 is as a dual tank is kind of what you want to do in this situation, but we don't love it. Uh, I'm going to do something kind of weird for a second here. I'm hoping this Volt Switch can break the substitute, but that's dubious at best. Does. Excellent. We're going to beware on the body. Press. Uh, again, it was outspeed my Bliss, which doesn't really tell me much. I have no idea if we can survive a Volt Switch. I'm going to just go straight to my Diggersby here. Here comes Coco, actually. Now, it's not it's not Boots, it's not Leftovers. That leads me to believe it's Specs. So we'll go straight to my Blissey here again. Let's just we can either teleport and set up a Volt Switch, which will kind of let it in Zera Aura for free. I wish this thing kind of had a, a different moveset, honestly. Uh, I could do that, or I could just Seismic Toss and take the damage. Let's do that. I think we'll see a Defog. Yep. And then I'll Stealth Rock. If I knew they're in a Defog, maybe Stealth Rock's the optimal play. But, oh well, we get Chip on an important Mon. It's going to be a bit of a slower one until they break my Mons or vice versa. It's going to be tough. Uh, we can obviously go off once we get Diggersby going here. The only reason I can think of them for swapping in right now is to do a Nature's Madness. Hmm. Okay. Weird. In comes Rotom. Takes more Chip. Uh, I will kill this thing in exchange for Stealth Rock staying up for sure. And they forfeit. Okay, they just didn't want to do it. You know, kind of a slow play style. I don't super disagree with them. Um, I'll try to do a different, you know, this is a very, very standard mono normal team. Um, I'll maybe try in the next live to mix things up a little bit. Um, however, I, I kind of, I really like this team. I, I, I come back to it a lot when I'm just messing around the ladder because it's just, you know, it's the epitome of like, I'm just, I'm tired. Or like maybe I'm drunk or whatever. And I want to play some monotype, but I don't want to like have to really 1000 IQ it. This is just a safe go-to. Uh, but I would like to get a game maybe with an Obstagoon in here. And DD is an insane wall breaker as well as Porygon Z. Bravery, one of my favorite Pokemon. Go Birds. And x Cloud too. Great wall breakers in this typing. Excuse me. Uh, okay, we see Steel here. Again, disadvantage matchup technically. Even though we only have one mom with a normal type attack, and it's maybe our best Pokemon in this matchup, if we're being honest. Because Fire Punch can just do a number on everyone. Uh, now, this Celesteela would, as I mentioned before, totally wreak havoc on us, if not for our Porygon 2. I'm pretty excited about it. In terms of lead matchups, I'm not sure to be exact, but Porygon 2 does look kind of clean right now. I'm gonna lead with it right here. Uh, we see Dub Blade, who is not an awesome matchup, if we're being honest. So I'll go to my Diggersby right away, expecting a setup. That's not the case. Uh, let me, I wish I had U-turn too as well. Ugh. Let me just Fire Punch for now. They protect. Okay, I'll double switch on the Heat Ran here with my, um, Blissey. Here comes Corviknight. Interesting. I guess I thought I could take the Fire Punch. Three rocks. Not too important, but it'll definitely limit this Heat Ran a little bit. I'll teleport as they close combat. I have Toxic Protect close combat. I mean, I guess it was obvious they'd have something for Blissey if they came in so confidently, but that really surprises me. Uh, let's go for a... Go for a Beware and Substitute. A lot of Substitute on this team, honestly. Uh, I wonder if already having it on Porygon, I should be doing something else here, if I'm being honest. And they forfeit. Jeez, no one wants to play today. <laughs> Oops. Let's get you back in there. Kind of disappointing. I mean, we're, we're striking Fury to Moon's hearts, but there's nothing worse than a bad substitute going up at a bad time, that's for sure. And Beware with that substitute up was also going to completely pop off against that team. There was no true answer. Celesteela would have been fine, actually. Um, even Corbin would have been okay, but like that was going to cause problems. And Not enough to forfeit over, though, that's for sure. I would have liked to deflect that Porygon, too. Maybe make the thumbnail or something. <laughs> That'd be fun. <laughs> But you know, come on, let's get a good game here. Let's get it. Let's get a good. Give me fighting. I don't care. Just let me play a game out. I don't care. I don't care. Fire is tricky. I'm not gonna lie. Fire is extremely tricky, and this is the reason. Look at Cinderace with high jump kick, and look at my team. What do you do? The best physical answer to that is Beware, and Beware gets okoed by Pyro Ball thanks to its fluffy ability making it weak to it. 
So this is this is a pretty rough one. I'm not going to front. So the Diggersby against that Torkoal Lee. That's exactly the case. There is no swap in. That'll either they got a swap here. They might stay in. Hopefully they have an air balloon heat ran. Good play by them. I love to see that. It'd be kind of lame if I just got their Torkoal out turn one there. Although again, I don't really don't love this matchup for us. Maybe I shouldn't be talking about lameness and start talking about what I do and don't want to see. Trick. Okay, should have seen that coming actually. In comes Blacephalon. I'm gonna see what they lock into here. They might swap out, but I'm gonna just see what they lock into. We will just keep doing it as Volcarona comes in. Volcarona we're not too afraid of. Well, Blissey being down makes it much more scary, that's for sure. Uh, let's go to... They won't attack turn one. Let's go to Porygon, in case they do. I think Ditto can Oko from this range. At least two at KO. They missed the Fire Blast, that was really lucky. Because uh, Ditto actually doesn't have very much health. So we'll get this off. Doesn't kill in the sun like I was hoping. Do we die? We don't. Amazing. Um, they should be going Heat Ran here. But I'm not confident enough to make a double switch. I don't have any idea on their habits so far. They made the correct play so far. But yeah, I think Heat Ran was obvious there. They knew I was choice locked. But whatever. What are you going to do? Uh, in comes Victini. Does Porygon live? Porygon's a hell of a tank. So fingers crossed. The U-turn, it seems to be Scar from what I can tell. Um, let's sub up here. Thunderbolt, hopefully they can't break through this right now. Good damage. Great. Okay, well I can recover if that's the case. Sub up again. We're burning through the Sun turns at a huge rate too. Rocks are still up. Uh, they, There's the Stealth Rocket, they might not have that move. We'll see. I think it was Blacephalon here. Well, Thunderbolt. Heavy Boots actually coming really handy for them. Or only when you trick moves, it's not so great. They missed two Fire Blasts so far. Sucks for them. I feel kind of bad. Um, they are just Boots. So I am fine to sub up here. No, I was not. Throwing play. If I recovered, I was fine. Throwing, throwing play. Are we faster than that Torkoal? Is there a chance we'll get a, another shot at it? We do. The Blissey here, and then I'll teleport. Teleport right now. If they swap out, that would suck, but it, because we can't get a, a recover chance on Porygon. But um, yeah, they do rapid spin, so that's great for us. We can get this guy back into the game. Uh, who's the swap? You should go to Victine and get the win, my guy. Weird play. Well, let's substitute here. They can't break it. Really weird plays from them. They yawn. Man, this person's totally choking the game. Just, we cannot reach turn 15 on the game here. I mean, uh, I don't know what to say. I think they had a shot. They didn't even bring out their Cinderace. Like, I think you literally bring in Cinderace and you go, <laughs> I think they could have won that game just by sending in Cinderace at that point. That's insane. Uh, Mono Psychic, I couldn't tell you a thing about this matchup, honestly. Like, two relatively rare typings. Um, and unlike, you know, I had to do a lot of prep for Mono Ground because it's been a while since I played that. It's a very distinct play style, but. I just kind of hopped right into Mono Normal for the most part, and I thought, yeah, it's normal. You go to this Mono this time, you go to this Mono this time, and I'm probably going to title the thumbnail like that. I think it's the best, most beginner-friendly uh, typing. It's just so easy to pick up and play, and really fun. Uh, let's lead with my... I don't want to see Rachi, but I'm going to lead Heliolisk on a whim. So we can see Victini. Hopefully you're not Scarf. This is pretty risky, if we're being honest. But I don't want to go to Porygon, because if they're Scarf, they could also trick which I don't want to have happen to me twice. It's even worse for Porygon, of course. In comes Sloking Galar. Um, let's just do this and do a really basic body slam on the slow bro. Let's see how much damage we get. Bippy, are you serious? You're kidding me. Rashi's paralyzed. That's karma. That's karma. <laughs> for all the harm you've caused us over the years. Uh, let's, let's substitute. Feeling cheeky. Nice. I just love subbing on a U-turn. It's just the best feeling in the entire world. Uh, gotta be Slow King here, though. I don't think we can do anything about that. Uh, Victini's the play. We'll Thunderbolt on another uh, U-turn. Okay, we take two. Again, 400 uh, HP, more than 400 defense. Really can't beat it. Let's Ice Beam and Fish for Freeze. Although, they might be running Scald. Finally, Fades there. We'll go to Blissey, get our own up. Okay, so far, you know, we have a bit of an advantage in the early game, but definitely wouldn't call this over by any means. Uh, Slowbro's nearly full. Uh, Jirachi's pretty full for the most part. 
you are probably going to trick me, but that's that's, you know, that's the awful thing is that they're gonna recreate that my ditto looks kind of dumb. But I can go to Diggersby because then if they trick me, I'm in a really fun spot. Um, it's a v it's a v create trick 50-50 right here, gang. I'm gonna go to Ditto. I'm just I'm in my heart feeling like we're gonna see a trick here. I'm wrong, but you know it's not the end of the world. Uh, let's. I don't want to trick my own, honestly. We're not doing too much. I'm gonna trick the slow bro coming in. Yeah, great. Uh, I'm gonna predict they don't stay and attack me. I could be totally mistaken here, but again, this is a and now useless for the most part. Ditto, who's only got one swap in. So yeah, I was willing to make that risk. Now Slowbro's really low with the rocks up and the scarf. So essentially, the game here. In comes Laddie ass. I'm not gonna just completely throw it away though. There's a side shock. Let's soft boil. Want to keep this thing healthy? There's a big bad Tapu Lele staring me down. Uh, Victini's the question though. But losing, losing it's uh, or having it take 25% every time it comes in is gonna be really nice for us. That seems like a good chance to lose the Ditto there. Is it gonna be faster? Should be, should be. Well, let's do this and body slam here. There's no real reason to earthquake. It's gonna body slam is gonna do all the killing we need to right now. I was praying they would stay in. No such luck. There goes Slowbro. You know, Tiggersby's looking disgusting right now, for being honest. The only question now is Tapu Lele blocking our uh Ooh, Draco Meteor there. The only question is uh Tapu Lele blocking our quick attacks. Kind of scary. We will go to, hmm, Sash Shock's been your place so far. Your special attack's halved, so I'm down to do this and just get some momentum. Plus, I, I guess he probably recovers your last move, being honest. Rachi's the play. Another easy move here. All Earthquake, I've body sent every single time. If they read it and they go to Latias, yeah. Great, uh, in comes Victini again. No, you're not banded. Can Porygon take it? I should really just calc it if I'm being honest. So give me one sec. Okay, we quite easily live it with Porygon. Man, I, you cannot sleep on this Porygon. That's insane, insane. Okay. My calc was wildly wrong. What did I miss here? Why did that do so? What did I? Someone's gonna be screaming at me in the comments. What did I miss? Oh, it never revealed itself to be Scarf like I thought in my head. So it is just banded. Dang, that's frustrating. 40 to 47. That still shouldn't be doing that much. What am I missing? Huge blow. Um, but at least we get to claim another one with Diggersby. That's huge. Body slam here. Again, there's no reason to Earthquake. Uh, you know, maybe Earthquake with Oko, Tapu Lele, and Body Slam won't. But, you know, nothing to play around with. This is going to be easy to at KO. Great for us. It's a bit of a sack war at this point. Luckily, we're up a Pokemon. Um, but where is doing nothing at the stage of the game, so you can die, sir. Oh, it's so frustrating because I know someone in the comments is going to point it out, but I'm dying to know right now. We spanned, we create, Porygon 2. I got to stop. I got to stop. It's probably obvious at this point. Here we go. Another body slam. Who's going to take it? Laddie, gone. Teeny again. Um... Let's go to Heliolisk. Diggers B again. I'm hoping we get a speed up plus one. And I think we revealed it's not Scarf. Great news. In comes Tapu Lele. And it gives us the ideal 1v1. If it's Specs, Focus Blast, I guess there's a world they still win. But I think Blissey probably wins that 1v1, honestly. Doesn't even get the kill. Great. GG to them. <laughs> I'm not going to continue this live until I figure out what the hell is going on. So I can at least absolve myself somewhat. Okay, yeah, there Predictably, there it is. Super frustrating oversight. Just the 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 default Victini you find in here. For some reason, max HP. Yeah, that... Okay, there it is. That's... Okay. Glad I figured that out. Bad calking is... The enemy of me in particular. Let's get one more. I'm embarrassed as enough, but... I mean, really a, a flawless live so far. And we're pretty much... I think we win this one. We're in the top 500 on this account. We'll keep it going. Hopefully, we can find another game quickly. I'm recording this pretty late at night. Honestly, so we'll see. We'll see. Uh, might take a little bit of a minute. Monotype, I, I don't, I think at one point on a stream, I wrote down all the most popular types in Pokemon, but uh, I, I don't remember where Monotype ranked. I think it was in like the upper crust, but 
You see ice here, but not a normal ice at all because it doesn't seem to be your typical slush rush team. I guess you really can with Vanillax and Sand Slash Alola, but no Aurora Veil is certainly an interesting sight. Um, let's see how we match up here. I'm going to go with my uh, Heliolisk as a lead against this Vanillax there. I don't see any answer to my Volt Switch. We should outspeed pretty easily. And um, it's actually looking really great this whole matchup. Takes it quite easily though. A little Blissey as they do have Aurora Veil, my mistake. Uh, rocks are going to be awesome here though. I can't imagine they're all wearing heavy boots. Probably Articuno, but not sure who beyond that. Sand Slash Alola comes in. This is really a dream matchup for our Beware though. Not only are we four times super effective, but it's contact and Fluffy is going to make it pretty much resist then. Uh, they got a triple axle here. They just Iron Head, fine by me. Drain Punch, also a good matchup here. Yeah, we're looking really looking pretty poised, honestly. Uh, Diggersby won't be able to do too much due to the typing, but I'm okay with that. We get almost nothing back. That's crazy. Let's go to my Porygon. Let's go to Blissey again as they Tailwind. I'll teleport. I'm worried about a Defog a little bit, but they Tailwind it, which is kind of throwing me off, if I'm being honest. Uh, I guess it's for Glass Trier. So I'm expecting a U-turn here into Glass Trier or a hard swap, taking that damage there. Beware should still tank this. This is why we have Beware. Uh, Porygon 2 certainly could, but this is this is literally Beware's job. If it's a fighting type move, we're fine. Nothing else should be super effective here. Uh, they do have Aurora Veil, and they do have ridiculous defense stats, so maybe it's not winning the matchup, but I can't think of a better reason to go to this thing. Uh, you know, I, I do want to keep it healthy still for... Oh, you're just going to give us more health for free? That's like really... Sub 25% damage? Are you kidding me? That's absolutely disgusting. But Aurora Veil's gone. Can they Oko us? I mean, we got a Ditto. It's like the worst case scenario, Beware dies. We're at full health. We're at 426 defense. And we tank it like, like nothing. Like it's a joke. Like it's an absolute freaking joke. <laughs> nice. And there's no swap in. Uh, even Artico, Articuno's taking a decent amount there. Vanillix comes back in. I'm going to Drain Punch. Oh, we're actually faster. What? What is it? What was its stats? Just a, a dead mon. They can send in Sand Slash Alola, but we've just established it's a winning matchup. I think this is going to end the live right here on a, just a on a big old sweep. All right, Diamonds Bite, can you can you show us what you got? Can you win? Didn't have what it took. Really did not have an ounce of what it took, and they're going to forfeit. That's going to give us the win there thank you guys so much for watching uh make sure to let me know in the comments below what monotype team you want to see me play next after mono normal here we saw a huge swelling of uh votes last time which is really fun stuff the next live i'm gonna play more mono normal i'm not sure what i'm gonna throw in honestly because this is i say this for a lot of teams of course but this really is one of my top five favorite teams in monotype you know there's something to be said for the exciting gravity uh eject button cool plays you can make or the or the uniqueness of slush rush or the coolness of dragons but sometimes i just want to play a team where i zone out it's easy i don't have to think too much about it and i just you know i just go to the right mon plissy goes to here oh i go to you know sand slash alola go to beware oh there's a whatever there's there's a mon that's weak to special attacks go to my helio list there's something to be said but a nice like zen play style like this so it's gonna break my heart to leave this team alone next game and I also love, we didn't get to show it off, the synergy with his substitute. I think it helps you win a lot of the matchups, not get toxic against some other defensive tanks, which is huge. But man, having a match against that Scylla Steel that's positive is just magnifique. But hey, all winning live. We, we absolutely love to see that. That's good stuff. I'll catch you guys next time. Take it easy.